Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Sorry for the interruption, but it is super important. If you desire to have a podcast, don't be afraid. Use Spotify for podcasters. It's what I use. Go to anchor.fm. It's free. And get your voice out there. The world needs to hear your wisdom, your experiences, your love. So don't be afraid. Go share your love. Some of you may have seen some YouTube videos this weekend. One was a live one for everybody that goes through 10 different signs to know and identify when you are addicted. And then a couple of ways in that same video, how to stop that addiction. But then after I did a specific video for the people in the soul, mind, and body group, and I'm telling you, I had to make a tough call. After I've been assessing myself with my coffee and I've been getting up and I've been excited to have coffee, it's not just coffee though. It's the coffee with the cream, with the butter, all whipped up. I don't have any sweetener in there. It's sweet enough as it is. And then I was attaching that to my prayer and I was making this coffee a reason to get up, a reason to pray. It was becoming a bit of an idol to me. So I made the decision that I'm not going (laughs) to have coffee anymore. I'm going to go back to not drinking coffee. So I have my tea. When the coffee maker went off this morning, I frowned because I was disappointed. But I also want to see what it's like over this next week, because I'm just going to do it for a week, kind of assess and feel how I'm doing, what's the body reacting to, what it's not reacting to. I know I'm making a couple of changes. If there's any engineers out there, you're freaking out because I'm not only quitting coffee, but I'm also not going to have any whipping cream. I downed that last night. I finished all of the remaining cream yesterday. So there's not a drop in the house. I'm just sharing that with everyone because new addictions can come up all over the place. And if we're not really paying attention, it may become a really super bad addiction before we even know that it is one. I never thought of myself as being addicted to coffee. Never. And I was always a black coffee person. I used to drink coffee so I could lose weight. That's what I thought I needed to do was just put black coffee into my body as much as I possibly could so that that caffeine could get my fat burning and my metabolism up. That was my logic. So my coffee drinking had nothing to do with cream or sugar back in the day for most of my life. It was just this recent bout with getting back on keto and getting back into that coffee. Because if I think about when I was on keto a couple of years ago, I loved praying and having my bulletproof coffee in the morning. So today was tea. Now I've got my tea. It's actually a little sweet. It tastes a lot different now that I've been having coffee, which I think has a little bit of a bitter taste to it. 
Anywho, I'm sitting in my prayer with my tea and I'm reflecting with God because I'm not truly peaceful. Something's not right. And it reminded me of way back when I first started my ministry. If you were on my podcast or hanging around in the very, very beginning back in, what was it, 2019 I started it? I was still, every Monday, I would have this anxiety and worry and fear about my ministry. My husband would get up, he'd go to work, and I would then be faced with myself, with this decision, (laughs) and what am I going to do? How am I going to survive doing this ministry when I don't know a thing about it? I don't know anyone in it. I don't have a network of people. I don't have skills to do this technical stuff. So every Monday morning, I had <laughs> this horrible, actually, it was more than Monday mornings. It was, it was many, 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 many mornings. And that feeling I had today, what is going on? So I sat with God for a little while and I realized It has everything to do with my soul, mind, and body summer series that I'm putting together. I so desperately want to help people on their journey of change to put that addiction, that perpetual sin, that bad behavior, that vicious type of stuff behind you. I'm so excited to do it that I think there's a part of me inside that's sensing, what if I fail? What if people don't want to do this? What if I'm putting all this effort together and I've only got a fistful of people that do it? That's where God took me. God took me back to resting in his arms, to his peace. Because what I did was I gave it to him. I said, Lord, I am going to trust That whoever you want to participate in this summer series is good enough for me. Even if it's one soul. I posted on social media because YouTube sent me this congratulations kind of email. You have over 2,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And I laughed because I used to like live and breathe by that. I used to be so into, did anyone watch my video? Does anyone like my video? You know, it became a, you out there in the world validated who I was and what I was doing with my ministry. And yes, that's important because obviously if people are participating and joining in, then yeah, I might be hitting a button that makes sense to the people out there who need it. But ultimately, in this whole journey, this whole ministry, I've had to give it to God. And I've had to go find his peace and rest in Jesus. And this, I'm finally getting to it, people. Finally, finally, this was what happened in the readings today and in prayer. I just have to tell you, this is my third time recording this podcast because for some odd reason, I couldn't go back into my email and look at my readings and then come back into my podcast app, it just shut down on me. So yeah, I feel like I've talked about this for the last two hours and I don't know what I've said or haven't said. So I hope that this is honestly making sense and I'm still fighting a little bit of congestion. Sorry, everyone. Okay. The gospel, John 16, 29 through 33, the disciple said to Jesus, now you are talking plainly. And not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe me now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone because the Father is with me. Excuse me. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world, you will have trouble, but take courage. 
I have conquered the world. So here you go. Jesus is saying, I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. That's the battle between the self-control, the, the, the desire to control our lives, and the humility of letting it go and giving it to God and knowing, hey, you've conquered the world. You've got this. You've told me I'm going to have trouble. So now I'm just going to give it to you. And then the optional memorial of St. Rita is sitting, staring me in the face. And I haven't clicked on that for I don't know how long. Many, many, many months to look at optional readings. But today, the Lord prompted me because it's St. Rita. She rocks. <laughs> okay, so Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. It's all about peace, everyone. This is the road with God. When we take that time and we start the day with him and we offer him whatever is bugging us, and we offer him whatever is awesome with us. Maybe you wake up and you were like, holy cow, what is this? I am so ready to face this day. I cannot wait to get out and be love and life and joy and zeal. Ah, like there are days where I wake up like that. I should give that to God too. Not just give him my cruddy days where I'm tired and anxious and worried and fearful and all that stuff. And it goes back. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So what is he telling us to do here? One, have no anxiety at all. Actually, let's go up one verse right before it. Number one, the Lord is near. <laughs> I mean, come on, the Lord is in you. The Lord is around you, through you, in you, with you. This is how we need to be thinking of Jesus. He is all around in, in us, in the Holy Spirit. Just crazy. Okay, the Lord is near. Number two, have no anxiety at all. Just don't. When it comes, give it to God, because this is what he says next. But in everything, by prayer and petition, so Lord, I don't exactly know what's going on. I feel weird. I don't really feel very comfortable and peaceful. I feel nervous and anxious. And it's all about things that I can't control anyway. So I am definitely giving it to you. Thank you, Lord, please. Then you, you pray and you petition. You ask for his help, right? Lord, help me. And then with thanksgiving, thank you, God. Thank you for taking this. Thank you for guiding me and leading me today. And then I make my request known to him and I let it go. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. This is what we do with everything that rocks our peace. With temptation, with people, with relationships, with events, with memories, with our jobs, with our states in life, with our everything. Don't have any anxiety. When or if that creeps up on you in any of those situations, immediately turn to Christ with petition and prayer. 
with deliverance prayers if needed. And I'm telling you, when you do this and you thank him and you are there with him, walking with Jesus in that moment, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean? That means then that peace will come back to you. If you've ever actively participated in a temptation or you were delivering spirits and you at the end ask the Lord to fill you with his spirit, like we're supposed to do. Remember, it's a two-step process. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of whatever, and I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence. And then, Father, please fill me with your spirit, your spirit of purity, your spirit of self-control, temperance, joy, love, peace, especially if you're freaking out and you're all fearful and anxious. When you have that anxiety just fall off of you like a coat that you just drop to the ground (laughs) and then all of a sudden you feel a physical peace, it's a spiritual overcoming. This is what we need to do all the time. This is when the peace of God is with us, is when we are with him. It's always We have it in Christ Jesus. So we had better start looking at having Christ in in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies, in our day, in our soul, in it. He wants to be with us in the mess. And the more that we talk to him and petition and prayer to him and thank him in the mess, then that peace is going to come over us and he is going to guard our minds and our hearts. And then we got Jesus on our side. What else do we need? Nothing. So let's think about how often we have Jesus in our lives so that we can have his peace in our lives. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> that last one was a little gravelly. All right, get on out there. Oh, we got to pray. I'm getting long here. Sorry. Again, like I said, after three times of recording this, I don't even know what I said. I know I had some great gems in one, two, three versions of it, but. This went a little longer. So here we go. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Excuse me, Lord. Please help me with this phlegm as I pray to you for all of the hearts and the souls that are listening to this right now. We are petitioning you. We are praying to you for peace to help remind us that our peace is you, that you resting in our hearts and us resting in Your heart is all we need. We ask that you remind us to talk to you, to pray to you, to stop and pause and see what's going on in our lives so that you can come in and help us make that right decision to have our bodies know that we are heading down the path of self-control and temperance and holiness, to have our minds see and realize what's going on around us so that we can participate with you on this awesome journey of faith. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. We want your peace. We need your help to continue to go to you to get it. So today we ask that when our peace is shaken, that you come into our minds and that we have a conversation with you and we give it to you and we love you and we trust you and we ask you to fill us again with your peace, your joy, and your love so that we can be as much like Christ as possible. Actually, so that we can step aside and allow Jesus to live through us 
with us and in us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Go out and be love, joy, and be peace. People need peace. <laughs> Look at the world. We need calm minds. We need souls that don't get rocked by people yelling and screaming and slapping labels and being all stressed out and unpeaceful themselves. Or better than that, because we're children of God and he has given us this spirit within us that we need to nurture and grow. Part of that reading today, your kindness should be known to all. And we can't have that if we don't have God. All righty. I love you all. Go find something more with God today. Soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day.